bitter Norris Division rivals. Drive the lock, buddy. They're now driven by two no-nonsense coaches, both with championship pedigrees. And the Detroit Red Wings are the 2008 Stanley Cup champions. And world-class talents. What a goal by the kid. Oh, my goodness. Nyquist moves right along. They score! Two teams with postseason aspirations continue the push to the playoffs. It's the NHL on NBC next. Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. 45 wins for the St. Louis Blues, 38 for the Detroit Red Wings. Two powerful teams here at Joe Louis Arena. To center ice, Pierre Maguire and Red Wings alternate captain Nicholas Cronwall. Thanks very much, Doc. They like to play fast and furious. How do you plan on combating them this afternoon? Well, hopefully we can have the puck as much as possible and make sure that they run around and we have the puck and play in their zone. Thanks for doing this, Nick. Have fun today. For the Red Wings, their captain, Henrik Zetterberg, trying to help his team get its 24th straight playoff appearance. If you haven't seen him play, you'll love it. Vladimir Tarasenko brings the fans in St. Louis out of their seats off, and he's only 23. Of 700 players in the NHL, he is in the top six in points and goals. Justin Abdelkader, Gus Nyquist, Henrik Zetterberg to start up front for Mike Babcock's Red Wings, and Nyquist flicked one that ricocheted on and can be played back down, chased down by Kyle Quincy. He and Danny DeKaiser start on defense for Detroit. This one came back for a shot that is ricocheting and off the mark. Alexander Steen, Dmitry Yashkin, Paul Stastny start for the St. Louis Blues, Chris Butler who let that shot go, and Alex Petrangelo for the defense. There is no team in the Western Conference with a better record since January 1st than these guys, the Blues. And no better team on the road in the entire league since January 1st than these Blues. Jimmy Howard steps out to scoop that one along. They lost yesterday in Minnesota by a decisive score. Both goaltenders played. And this one, Jake Allen, finished up yesterday and starts today. The pass ahead is off through Miller, but he's able to collar it and throw it around behind. Glenn Denning on the forecheck, but meanwhile it skips all the way back down, and DeKaiser will go back to take this. No icing on the play. Talk about that game yesterday, Doc, where they gave up six goals in Minnesota. The prior three games, they only given up one goal. Uh, got a couple of crazy bounces in that game for Minnesota yesterday going in the Blues net. Yeah, not a lot of hockey luck for the Blues yesterday. Absolutely correct, Eddie. Around this comes, and it's jabbed, but right over to Darren Helm, who made his reappearance from injury in, yes, in Friday's game down in Tampa Bay. This one is guided back out by Schwartz and can be played back on by Tarasenko, and his shot got the glass. Jabbed on around, but quickly turned back to Helm and brushed on but failed and then followed through very well by DeKaiser. Wended on by Helm, and Helm took a swap there and a couple from Ole Jokinen. Rolled off that. Pivots, looks for reinforcements fresh from the bench. And while falling, played one in front. And there'll be a penalty because of the fall. Well, Darren Helm did a heck of a job here. He was all by himself. I mean, as he entered the zone. The Red Wings are in the middle of a change. There's Helm. Now watch him. He's able to buy some time here. He's all by himself. The Blues actually go for a change, too. They see there's two against one, and Helm's the guy that draws the penalty. Outstanding work by Darren Helm. So Zetterberg with Abdelkader, a part of the front line. Kulkinen is the other on the right side on this power play that is number one in the league, and we get a halt to play, and a high stick has been called, and they are checking on Jackman who got hit in the face yesterday in the game with Minnesota, and Justin Abdelkader is going to get the call right off the faceoff. He tries to establish body position on Barrett Jackman. And you'll see the stick come up. It was actually earlier in the shift. The stick came up off the faceoff, and that's where Abdelkader gets it. 
and you'll see what we're talking about graphically. You'll see the circled players and watch what happens. The stick's gonna come up right there. So it's for a side. And right there, Jimmy Howard, they're about to drop it and off this tie-up, it is scooped along and played by Cronwall back to Jonathan Erickson. Erickson rolled off that. These two guys, silver medal winners, winners from uh, Sochi last year. And it is held by Erickson. His brother Jimmy was the only player who wasn't an NHL player on the team from Sweden. This one angled right back in and winds up being an icing call. Let's take a look at our goaltenders brought to you by Honda. Jake Allen, just 24. This is his 46th game in the NHL, his first two years ago here, and he won it, his very first start. Jimmy Howard will turn 31 this Thursday, sixth straight season as the number one here. 11-7-2 lifetime against the Blues. And from this, it is fought for and rolled around behind where Erickson goes to get it. And along, it's jammed by Cronwall and can be carried back up by Tatar. Tatar goes to the Bowmeister side and flips it in wide of Allen. He's able to spin it right back around. Paul Stastny, who collected his 500th career point yesterday in Minnesota, sees this one ricochet on back now to Shehan, who let it go, and a good pad stop on a deflection made by Allen. A little bit of interference play there by Erickson on Stastny, not allowing him to get out to Shehan to create that chance. This is Stastny by himself now, dropping it back off. A drive by Petrangelo got the glass. Bounced around to Stastny, fed one, and that shot blocked away. And Nyquist steers it quickly back out. Brought on by Zetterberg and met from the bench by Oshi. Meanwhile, around to take this is Nyquist. He's got Brendan Smith right there, and Smith forced it right back to him. Nyquist pivoting now. Four against four for another 40 seconds, and then a long six-second power play for St. Louis, barring further penalties. <laughs> Hope they have it in the Detroit end, just so they can say they got a shot off. Meanwhile, this is rolled around now, and Oshi tipped it on. It's carried up by Schwartz, handed to Petrangelo with an opening and a drive into the glove of Howard. Talked about that play by Jonathan Erickson along the boards. You get the four on four, it's man on man. And Stastny was with his man Erickson there, but Shahan did a nice job of filling in for Erickson who had pinched in, and that's why that lane had opened up because of that subtle little accidentally on purpose interference by Jonathan Erickson. I don't think there's any team in the National Hockey League that does that better than the Detroit Red Wings to cause a little separation for the offensive guy and all every, over the ice. And every coaching staff in the league knows it, and they try to warn the officials about it before every game. It is Tarasenko laying this one across, and Jackman brings it on. Jackman chased off, Tarasenko to get it there. Down went Helm after that gentle collision, and around its pitch for DeKaiser. And DeKaiser with a pass that's directed back in by Eric Cole. Both minor penalties in the meantime have been served. Berglund gave it across and taking a look up ice and swinging it right back again as Jackman. Ladled back in by Backus and on the bounce. Oh, and then Glenn Denning caught a stick up high, and there'll be a penalty coming up against St. Louis for that. It'll be on Berglund. Meanwhile, back to plate this one, and to get the possession was Petrangelo. After a good play through the middle of the ice for the Blues, they get this puck in deep, but then Luke Glenn Denning gets good position on Patrick Berglund. There you see the careless play with the stick right in front of the official. That's a close shave there, too, Eddie, from Patrick Berglund on Luke Glendening, whose Michigan team lost last night. Bergwin from the same hometown as Nicholas Baxter, Vastaros, Sweden. Backstrom leading all assisters in the league at 54. Here is a shot off the post, and then held by Allen, a strong shot from Applegator. Now, Justin Applicator's had a tremendous season for the Detroit Red Wings, and part of it is because of his size and his strength, and he never quits on plays. Gets a good fortune bounce right there, and then some bad fortune off the new side bolts. Again, this is the number one power play in the league. We were about to document it further, but then Applicator took the penalty, and that was the end of that stat. Ten for the last 40, they are, but you got to count it as 10 for 41 because of the six seconds that it passed. More than you need to know. Zetterberg gives it across now, and Nyquist brings it on, hands it back up, Polkinen with it there. Polkinen a drive and a save, Allen, and he's able to cover the bouncing rebound. 
We go back to a set face-off play here by the Blues in her own zone. Now watch this little play here by Barrett Jackman because the face-off is going to come here and you have Pachangelo is going to get this puck and fire it all the way. Keys the face-off win. Little interference run by Barrett Jackman. Pounded around the boards. The Blues are off to the races and start their set. So a nice set face-off play. You can have all the face-off plays you want set, but the key, you got to win the draw. Tipped on by Cronwall and held to the outside by Nyquist. Given back in deep to Zetterberg at the front of the net, right near the crease in Holmstrom fashion. Abdelkader as the shot hit the frame. Played back along further. Abdelkader ridden off there by McCulloch. It's angled on back and retrieved now by Polkinen. Little shunt across came from Cronwall and is taken by Zetterberg. Back to Cronwall but off his stick and back down. So you allege that... Uh, well, we'll bring this back now with Backus putting one in to Jimmy Howard, and he tosses behind. You said Jackman interfered, so it goes both ways. Both teams do this. Got to work it. You get an opportunity. Go ahead. But there's no question that Detroit does it better than any team in the league. Chitlinski a shot. He went for the high glove and got the glass. Can he ever bring it? His 10th game as a Red Wing since coming over from New Jersey. He's got seven points here with Detroit. Zhidlitsky with it again, hands it back on, and it is Sheehan looking back for Zhidlitsky once more. Then to him it comes. Drive off the glove of Allen, and it is blocked around to the outside where Tatar can give it back. Touch quickly across to Sheehan from Zhidlitsky. Deals it on, and Cole popped one that went off the glove of Allen, but then he's able to cover it. Well, we're seeing the great power play play from the Detroit Red Wings. Marty Berger is here working in his role with the St. Louis Blues before the game he was visiting with us. And he was talking about the impact that Litsky can have on any team because of his power play presence and also his shot. He got a little taste of that there. He's sitting with his son, William, who goes to Shattuck St. Mary's and plays for Murray Eves, a longtime college player in the former Detroit Red Wings game. Indeed. Where are all the Brodeurs these days, Pierre? I know you scout these things out. Yeah, one of them is uh, actually playing in the Quebec Major Junior League right now, drafted by the New Jersey Devils, and that young man's at Shattuck. William. Angled along, and it bounced on back to center, and DeKaiser takes care of this one. Out of Warren de La Salle High School, near Detroit. Played right back along now for Miller. Wanted to brush it on further, could not. Full strength action here, first period of play. These teams used to be in the same division. Cranked on, and that one is kicked aside by Schwartz and nicely fiddled along so it can be played by Berglund around behind. McCulloch takes a look and sails a bouncer out to center. That goes back near Quincy. Pursued tightly on the play, though. Quincy able to slip one ahead. Grabbed and started back by Tarasenko. Tarasenko could not get by Quincy. Man, oh man, does he have escapability, Eddie and Doc. He's phenomenal. He took that game over yesterday in Minnesota at a certain point in the second period. Schwartz tried to play it along. A diving reach by Glendening fails, but it's brought back by Polkinen and lobbed back in. They want to make Allen play it, and he does. And safely around. Tarasenko connects back. Laterra there stood up by Cronwall. Yeah, there's no question. He is an offensive difference maker, Vladimir Tarasenko. Petrangelo circle to circle back, and it is forced on by Butler and tipped right back in by Schwartz. And so again, it's Cronwall. Seven and a half. Modest minutes have gone here in the first as that misfires for Anderson and is given back across by Lindbaum and slipped ahead to Ryan Reeves. And lobbed right back in, and Smith goes burrowing in after this, pursued by Ott. Steve Ott saw it come free, but it is taken on and then chopped off of Reeves and will be retreated on by Lindbaum. Nice job there by Smith to avoid the contact by Ott to be able to exit the zone. You know exactly what this fourth line wants to do with Reeves and Ott on either side of Ole Jokin and want to get in on the four check and try to put a couple of people into the third or fourth row. Chidlitsky plopped that one right back in. Lindbaum, or rather uh, McCulloch goes after that one and then Bollmeister crossed off there by Zetterberg. Driving around behind the Red Wing forecheck, trying to cause a cough up of the puck, and the bouncer can be kept alive neatly by Zhidlitsky, played on by Abdelkader, but there's not much to happen here because of Berglund and then McCollum. 8.40 gone, first period of play. The shots are 4-2 in favor of the Red Wings, and we have a lot of yelling because there's a signal of icing. 
and a discussion <laughs> by the referees with some of the Blues players. Yeah, the guys want a change, and they're not going to get that change because of the icing, and now they're going to get together, and they're actually going to say they can change, Doc. And hey, that's Eric Furlight, Ian Walsh, communicating with Ken Hitchcock, and they communicated as a staff, and a, as a referee staff, and face off the center right, so St. Louis could change. It is guided on back now for the take and the outlet by Petrangelo off of Oshi and back down where it's Quincy pursued by Schwartz. Nudged around and back is through one that went off of Glenn Benning and can be played further by Schwartz. Oshi couldn't come up with that one. Back is good. Gave it along now for Oshi. He pivots and is worked on by Glenn Denning to the back to Butler and the shot is sealed up by Howard. Sometimes you need more guys in stripes than we have. One peels off, three are involved, and a lot of players from the two teams. No score. Scoreless here in Detroit, along with Eddie Olchek, Mike Emmerich, and there's a cheating scandal going on in the first period. What are you talking about? Well, look, I mean, I think any time that uh, you can get an opportunity to get some separation, especially in the offensive zone, add those subtle little picks. We saw Erickson do it. We saw Jackman do it. I mean, all teams do it, Doc. With, I mean, Detroit just has the ability, and I think it's coached in them to be able to help each other out, especially in the offensive zone. Teams want to have tight coverage. And when you have a highly skilled offensive guys, you want to make sure that you're in there trying to help. So instead of having it become a one-on-one -on -one type of game, you have a guy just skate through a little bit and make it a two-on-one type of situation to give him a little bit more time to make plays all over the zone. Here is Erickson, the puck in his feet. Some trouble there, but help came from Shan to free it up to Tatar, and he will have a little more room. Although that one handicapped him a little bit too, so Erickson will try the other way. That went off a of St. Louis skate and a Detroit stick, and it's blasted right back in. So if at first you don't succeed, here is Cronwall, and then Erickson, and off his stick. Jammed along, nice finesse move by Tatar, and he gallops back with it, hoisting it back in well wide and Chris Butler plays it there skipped one along that is rescued by Tatar taken by Butler fed to Schwartz then on a cross for the carry back up Petrangelo gave it ahead walked on by Tarasenko able to peel to the outside with it now yanked a little pass that wound up coming to Tatar a couple of head fakes and an elevator pass came on across to Erickson slipped it on back and Cronwall takes it and he blasts one all the way back down and it goes for an icing 10 2 to go first period of play Icing is called, and another conference will take place here. Right before that last TV timeout, a little of a line, a little bit of a line adjustment by Kent Hitchcock, the head coach of the Blues. He put Jaden Schwartz out on the ice with uh, T.J. Oshie and David Backus, and they had that big skirmish there right before we went to that TV timeout. And now it looks like uh, another false icing call where the faceoff is going to be at center ice. And Eddie, one of the reasons why I think he did that, he was not happy with Bergwin taking that penalty early on in the game in a four-check situation. Reckless use of the stick. Usually it's Bergwin, Backus, and Oshi as a line. I think that's why you saw Jane Schwartz get out on that line. I think also, too, is the, uh, the recognition of game management with the clock. There is a clock issue here. Some of us have those usually in the spring and fall, but we'll be back after they settle this. <laughs> What's the best approach when you're playing against a team with as much structure as St. Louis? Well, I don't even know if it's so much structure. Uh, I just think it's uh, they have good players. They've got good depth. And uh, to me, the key for us today is to try to spend as much time in the offensive zone. And so, like a lot of good teams, they play with a lot of structure, but structure's great, but good players are better. Thanks a lot, Mike. <laughs> That's a lifeline shout out. Can I get Pavel Datsik back, please? <laughs> <laughs> Third game without him. They lost the prior two. Meanwhile, back to play this is Bomies. Shunted out to center and touched right across. Abdelkader, as the guy who sent the pass, Jedlitsky knew, would be right there, and so it worked out for them this time. So back to get this now is Bomeister, matched up with Zabenik McCulloch of the Arizona Coyotes for so long. This one jammed loose and came on back to Zidlitsky again. Zidlitsky holds, rattled it on around, and it is Nyquist leaving it, but Zabenik McCulloch taking it, clipping one that's off Zidlitsky and pumped on out to center. Zetterberg able to glide back now and send it back in. Zidlitsky to the bench for a change. 
McCulloch drove it around. Bomeister sent it further and then left it behind. We were trusting him too much, I guess. Rolled on back now for Smith. Under nine minutes to go, first period of play. The shots are 4-3. There's only been one in the last five minutes of play, and that by St. Louis. Cole could not get by. Thrown high by Jokinen, gloved on by Reeves. Touched across by Ott, skated down by DeKaiser. And then Cole, but he could not control. Jackman could and threw one along that ricocheted off of Jokinen. And now they gain the zone. Rolled back in for Cole. This is what Mike Babcock said. We want to gain the zone and then spend as much time there as possible. Ott has been able to cancel that out momentarily. Brought on by Jackman and ricocheted around. And Jackman made a real good play in his own zone behind the net when Eric Cole looked like he had a step, but a good defensive stick there by the elder skatesman on the back end for the Blues. Well, you say that so much when you watch St. Louis play. Just the steady nature of Eric Jackman's game. Angled back in and can be taken by Jackman. Shunted on around and it went away from the reach of Petrangelo. Drubbed by Pulkinen and it went wide. And then had to be shoveled away with a stick of Allen. Poked away by Backus but held and a shot flew wide. Directed to the corner boards and then played back up now for Reeves. Rolled along for Backus. Holds on and looks over the traffic. Backus a shot. Ricocheted off Erickson. Chopped along by Cronwall who will take it. It'll be Erickson eventually from Glenn Denning and then spirited it along for Cronwall. Third one back with Oshie and Backus. So he was only in the doghouse for a short time. Okay. <laughs> Rolled back in again by Berglund. Jostling in for it is Oshie. And then stepping along and yanking one across was Cronwall, but it's taken away and worked on back by Berglund. A hurried shot by Petrangelo is sealed up by Howard. So it is four shots apiece here with 12 and three quarter minutes gone. Get the only hockey app with free game highlights and audio, plus live out of market games. Download the official app of the NHL. Well, before that last commercial, it was just talking about you know the situation with the line adjustment by Kent Hitchcock is that what coaches will do they'll manage the clock and know that the next whistle there's going to be a TV timeout so maybe that's where you get an opportunity to double shift some of your better players so manage the clock maybe you bump up a Tarasenko maybe you bump up uh, a Schwartz with a Bacchus and Oshi but get your better players maybe a little bit more ice time so to speak with that uh, mandatory timeout coming. And offensive zone faceoffs like that. You see the STL line on the ice right now with Matera Schwartz and Tarasenko. Sure works for the initials of the team too, doesn't it? Yep. That's why it's creative. This one went off of Schwartz and is guided away by Howard. The play was started by Tarasenko. To the back it comes now. McCulloch a shot. Well wide trying to get a bounce off those boards and it's Latera taking it. Latera able to shove it on back and a drive is steered away by Howard. Rebound and Shahan was able to cancel out Tarasenko but now we're going to get a penalty coming up and it's a slash and it's on the Blues. Yeah, it's going to be on Latera for breaking the stick of Thomas Tatar. Jay Bomeister took a shot from the point and this puck was just knuckling all the way over and there you see the penalty by Latera. I mean Jimmy Howard made a really good save right before that penalty as the puck exploded off the stick of Bowmeister and was just on edge all the way. Third power play for Detroit. Won the full two minutes. The other was just six canceled out by another minor. And they go to work here. Zetterberg is tossed out of the faceoff. The Blues have killed off 19 of the last 20 full power plays and then this fraction one will make 20 out of 21. Nice number. To the back it comes now for Cronwall to hand over to Nyquist. Nyquist just delaying it now. A couple of blues are on him but he looked and clearly gave it back now to Cronwall. Walks it across, got it on to Nyquist. And Nyquist a shot that is shrugged away by Jake Allen. Good save. Never saw it with applicator right in front. Here's Nyquist again. He's got Pulkin in near the front of the net. Gives to the back now to Cronwall. Looks across to Zetterberg and walks it on. Fake the drive, got it to Nyquist. Holds and shoots one, and that went off the skate of Jackman and wide, and then he was buried. Meanwhile, touched on by Abdelkader, and swept on back to Nyquist by Pulkinen, and then a drive by Cronwall. A loud pad save made by Allen, and it is cleared by David Backus. 45 seconds gone on the penalty kill to the Blues. So now, Zidlitsky began in the NHL at 28. He's currently 38. Played in the Czech League as a professional for a while. Here's Helm giving it back now to Zidlitsky. 
Able to marshal the forces and a drive that was directed wide off the stick of Tatar, dug out by Bomeister and cleared, and Tatar could not close it off with his chin. So back it comes now for Howard in the last 45 of the Red Wings' power play. Carried back up by Zidlitsky. He's got Eric Cole nearby, decides to drop it back for some speed gain by Cheyenne, and he emerges. But it's taken away and popped back out by Ott, settled down by Zidlitsky, harassed there by Jokinen, touched across by Cheyenne, carried on by Helm. And it's Helm giving it back. Shan a shot blocked right back by Jokinen. Zidlitsky a shot, and that one blocked down and cleared back out. And shaken up was McCulloch, and he skates on one leg and then okay, I guess, at the bench. He's the one that sacrificed there on that big shot block. So to the last 10 of this power play. Shots are 6-6 in the game with under five minutes to go in the first period. Carried back along by Yurko. Yurko backhands one that flew through the crease wide. And the Blues might be able to get an odd man rush here. Oshie able to bring it back in. He's got Laterra breaking. Oshie fed it across. Oh, and the shot canceled out. As trying to let that shot go for the Blues was Paul Stastny. Just rolled over his stick. And then a centering pass got the back of the cage. The try from Drew Miller. Led right back across again, and it's Carried back on by Lindholm, a hurried drive and a pad stop made by Howard, and it steered through a lot of traffic. Normal for Detroit doing that with Smith, and then around behind for Zetterberg. Couple of bouncing pucks here. This is carried right back up ice again by Smith and given to Abdulkader. Abdulkader in drive, save made by Allen, rebound is swept away by Schwartz. Tarasenko got there, was roll blocked, but he'd gotten it out to center before that. Good effort coming all the way back by Schwartz to be able to clear that puck, as you mentioned, Doc. Here is Cronwall fresh from the bench and another defensive change for Mike Babcock's crew. Given on and connected by Zetterberg to Cole. He flew it back in and Zetterberg glides after it. Lindbaum turned it around there. And then it gave it up to Cole. Cole able to get it back and a drive by Erickson is stopped and then covered by Allen and a little more snarl. 3.33 to go, first period at Joe Lewis Arena. We have no score in this game. The NHL on NBC is brought to you by SAP. Visit NHL.com slash stats with insights from SAP. By your local Lexus dealer. And their pursuit of perfection. By Progressive, comparing rates to help you save. Now that's Progressive. And by DQ, the home of fan food, not fast food. Oh, great play by T.J. Oshie looking to set up Paul Stassi for his 501st career point. But as he goes to shoot it, the puck just rolls on him. It goes right over the blade. And a missed opportunity there for Stastny and the Blues. Speaking of line changes, Eddie, Eric Cole now playing on line with Abdelkader and Zetterberg. Usually that's Nyquist playing on the right wing, not Cole. Here's Abdelkader, put it off the pipe, and it sails out of play after Cole was able to tangle there and free the puck up from Petrangelo. And I think part of that, Eddie and Doc, is they want more of a sledgehammer mentality against this big physical St. Louis defense. So maybe for an offensive zone faceoff, you do put an Eric Cole out there and he can create some space. A good physical play there, went in a battle on Petrangelo, and then you saw the release, but you love that the head, up, head was up with just an applicant and looking at Jay Gallon, what the position was, and just go short side off the post. Shitlitsky played that one along, but right to Petrangelo, though he gave it up to Zetterberg, floated on, and it's Oshi having it spiked away. And well done there by Zidlitsky, but the Blues are able to gallop right back with it. Berglund brings it on, got it to Oshie. Fakes, set one, just past Berglund, who was defended by Smith. Another shot, ricocheted across on the stop by Cole and the carry by Abdelkader. He's got Zetterberg up the wing, tucked one to Cole, threw it off the stick of Allen, and it's scooped up and taken on by Bacchus. Under three minutes to go, Petrangelo with a bit of an opening now, getting reinforcements from the bench, is run off by Cronwall. Erickson connects to Cronwell, then right back up to Shahan again. Tucked right back across for Tatar. Tatar wanting to go by Bomeister and flew one on the backhand just high and wide. And it'll be grabbed off by Cronwell. Then Helm. And shot back in, but it winds up being an offside. We'll go back to the effort by TJ Oshie. His man ends up being here, but just watch the effort. 
by T.J. Oshie. That's Henrik Zetterberg on the left side. This is a two-on-two -two that turns into a three-on-three. -three. But Oshie comes all the way back. Everybody has a man. And then the support by the Blues come in and pick up that opportunity. And Eddie, see David Backus right there? That's what he was talking about with T.J. Oshie right here on a bench. Great effort. Way to come back and support one another. Bang on. Great replay. Tucked right back across, and it's Lindbaum ahead, guided back in by Ott. And scooped around for Smith. Backhanded off the referee, but it is played by Zidlitsky. Long toss, flagged there by Pulkinen. An onside play, chopped one along that can be read and played back out again by the alternate captain for the Blues, Jackman. Frank back in by Ole Jokinen. Jammed on a cross, and it was freed up by Anderson for Nyquist to play out. Then back to Nyquist yet again. A little deception there by Nyquist as he almost, almost like traveled with that puck as it came to him there. Made a quick little move there and was able to get it in and uh, get a change. Traveling, I guess, is legal. It certainly is in the <laughs> NBA. <laughs> Carried back ahead by Schwartz, and Schwartz a drive, and a save made by Howard, and back up to Helm. Helm led it across to Tar, brought it ahead. And offside is the call. Coming up on the Lexus Intermission Report, Liam, Mike, and JR, Blue Collar Blues, and the Hamburglar is fueling the Senators. Well, I think one of the better leaders in the game is David Backus, and if you're down here, you get the privilege of hearing him interact with his teammates and with the opposition. Phenomenal leader. Really, really impressed by that man right there. And anybody that likes dogs or cats has got to love David Backus for all that he's done for all the critters, including a couple from Sochi that he got back and found homes for. My goodness. Well, they started showing up, and he, you know, he took them aside and gave them a little attention, got baths for them, and then cleared it with the authorities and got all the vaccinations to get them back into the United States, and then he found homes for both of them. Oh. He and his wife, Kelly, are doing an awful lot in the St. Louis area nationally for animals and athletes. He's also a registered airplane pilot, has his own license to fly planes. Well, he probably carries a few of the pups along with him, doesn't yeah. he? Well, to a side, this is controlled along to the outside now and fed for Shea shot, ricocheted. And then is tucked back out again for Tarasenko. He glides along with it now. Tarasenko finesses, tumbled down, got up, still with it, tumbled down, hooked it along with his stick, and he has drawn a penalty to the Red Wings. He's a hard guy to stop. Power play, St. Louis. Well, it's one of those shifts you were talking about, Doc, a little bit earlier about the impressive skill level of Vladimir Tarasenko. Walking in, gets tripped up there by Riley Sheehan, but he's able to stay with that puck. Really could have drawn two penalties on that play with the outstanding effort by number 91 to the Blues. He's That's like Harry Houdini. Yeah, right? he's, yeah, I think this is where the Blues are much different than they were last year. I think the emergence of Tarasenko, Jaden Schwartz has had a terrific season. The signing by Paul Stastny by the terrific general manager, Doug Armstrong, is that they're a much different team offensively, much deeper team than they were last year. They have more offensive difference makers now. I didn't even mention Bacchus or Oshie or Steen in that mix. And you got Petrangelo on the back end. You got Shattenkirk right around the corner coming back from injury. And don't forget Dimitri Yashkin is really starting to find his way. Ken Hitchcock really impressed with him. Three for the last 14. The Blues on the power play. This one is shunted back in. Glenn Denning goes around to get it, sweeps it, but it corralled over for the clear back down by DeKaiser. The Red Wings have killed off the last 11 in a row. So their penalty killing has improved lately. This is carried back on by Backus, and he flew one down. That will go for a power play icing against St. Louis with 25 and a half to go. And Doc, nobody happier than Tony Granato, who does such a great job in shorthanded situations, whether he's in Colorado as a head coach or in Pittsburgh as an assistant, and now here with Detroit. You see him talking to Luke Glenn Denning on the bench. He does a phenomenal job with the penalty killers. Downers Grove, Illinois. Is it Cubs or Sox? You better say Tigers. Because he's here in Detroit, right? Eddie would know. Yeah, Eddie. He's, a, no, he's a Sox guy, trust is me. He? he still rubs it in every time the Cubs lose. Oh. He is part of the first family of hockey for sure. But, of course, his sister Cammie decorated gold medalist for Team USA for women's hockey. Hockey Hall of Famer. Indeed, this comes back to Tarasenko to steam for a drive. Oh, and that one was tipped up high against the glass. I believe Bacchus got a piece of that. 
Dildert on now and taking it along a centering pass and fanning on that at the horn, Petrangelo. And that's it for the first 20. Shots were 10-8 in favor of Detroit. Your score sheet empty? Mine is. Nothing, nothing after one. Before the present, the past. Number five for the St. Louis Blues, Bob Plager. Played defense in the NHL for 14 years, including in the six-team NHL with the Rangers. Look at that hip check on Derek Sanderson in the 70 final. Vladimir Konstantinov. Only six years with the Red Wings. Rock'em Sock'em, he had the ability to score as well, even when he'd been hit. A tragic limo accident in 1997 ended his playing career. He looks on today at Joe Louis Arena, a wonderful hard-hitting defenseman who won a Stanley Cup in 1997. fun to go back in time, particularly because the logos for these teams haven't changed. It's been the blue note since they entered the league in 67, and from the time that the Red Wings became the Red Wings, it was the winged wheel. 1931 was the first time they had that, though they entered the league in 1926. Falcons and Cougars before Red Wings. This one shaken back across and then is given on over to Steen. Steen marshals the forces and Oshie can stash it around. Into some traffic. Pulled free by Stastny and handed on back. Petrangelo to Steen. And Steen a drive and it went wide. Down to the last 20 of this carryover power play. Well, it took the Blues some time to get the puck into the zone. And Red Wings did a wonderful job of really standing them up. And the Blues finally shot the puck in. Oshie shot it in. They were able to get that retrieval and they missed the net with that only chance. Schwartz's shot was steered wide and Helm. Faked the drub and then pivoted back, but it went off Quincy and is covered by Howard. So the penalty box empty here. Full strength action with a minute gone in the second. Looks like the Red Wings will make a change here. Tatar comes on. Tatar, their leading goal scorer at 26. 26 goals for this guy. Off the tie-up, it is kicked right on, and then Quincy can play it back over for the carry back up by Tatar. Has Helm nearby, pushed it back in. McCulloch to play that, lifted it off the glass, and it almost hopped over the glass. Here's McCulloch again with a little more space, quickly closed off by Helm. Laterra tried to help out, and it came along to Shahan. Shahan saw McCulloch spirited away, and then it's pushed back into him and eventually back out. Tarasenko connects with Schwartz, but that one canceled out by DeKaiser. And so back they go again, Bo Meester taking over. Played back through for Laterra, but not out. Tatar comes by and then canceled out by McCulloch. Detroit 14th best in team defense, St. Louis 9th. Time for inside the glass, and there doesn't seem to be much room for you this time, <laughs> Pierre. Oh, my goodness, it's close. That's why you got to go to the gym, Doc. But one of the things the Detroit Red Wings do so well, manage the puck. And you see little examples of it. Luke Landanning moving the puck, go D to D, get a shot on goal, not panicking with the puck. Darren Helm smart with it, distribute it again, get the puck to the goal. Detroit's so good at something they really want to focus in on in this game today, dominating the puck. And Mike Babcock talked about it, Nick Cronwall talked about it. When you dominate the puck, you take some of the physicality away from the St. Louis Blues, which is such a weapon for them. Is it just me, Pierre, or, or is it narrower for you there than I remember last time we were here? I don't know, Doc. It looks like the walls in Pitt and the Pendulum <laughs> closing in there. Anyway, off this face-off, it's one on back now for Butler to give across. Petrangelo a shot, and that directed wide as getting a piece of it was Reeves. Now it's sent back for Petrangelo, and he slammed one that ricocheted loose in front, paddled away by Jimmy Howard. On the bounce, it's Butler trying to keep, but spiked away from him by Anderson, and then curled on out again by Shedlitsky for the carry-on by Polkinen. Polkinen with a blast, and blocking that away was Allen. Polkinen tipped one on through, but it's guided ahead to Ott, challenged by Zhidlitsky, and then on it's flown by Jokinen, and then slammed back in. So two and a half played here in the second period. The shots are 11-9, both teams with one in the early going here. We were scoreless in the first, Eddie. Do you think either team wanted to change a thing about what they did in the first period? Uh, I think both teams would like to be a little bit sharper offensively, better passes, better outlets coming out of the zone. I think we hit a, a patch there in the first period where you did create some chances. Abdul Kader a shot, rebound on, another try by Cole would not go. 
Out of the quiet came the best opportunity for the Red Wings so far, other than Abdelkader's post. Up with this is Zetterberg, hands back on to Cole. Big man burrows his way back out and hands on to Abdelkader. Abdelkader flips one that's off two sticks, both Jackman's and Allen's, and then the net is dislodged. All righty, the subtle little coaching change by Mike Babcock's working for the Detroit Red Wings. It hasn't paid off yet, but they're getting chances. Eric Cole, instead of Gustav Mike, was playing with Abdelkader and Zetterberg. And the physicality of those two wingers, Abdelkader and Cole, can make a huge difference against a physical St. Louis defense. Oh, he's got to like this, Pierre. The work down low. Quick little stick there by Zetterberg. The chance for Abdelkader and a great save there from Jake Allen. Not once, but twice. Abdelkader with the first chance and then Cole not able to elevate that second chance. But the quick stick by Henrik Zetterberg on Lindbaum generated two A-plus chances. To retrieve this, wearing Bob Plager's old number five, it is Jackman laying it back along off of the skate of Oshie. Tipped ahead now, and Bertland can pick up somebody. And that's Lindbaum, trickled it on through. Lindbaum screamed out enough by Yurko that it could be thrown away by Howard. Now the resulting play up the boards. Jackman hurried one that was wide as hoping to tip was Berglund. And a delayed penalty call coming up against the Red Wings here as Berglund circles to the outside, shuttles it back off. Lindbaum stashed it on a cross. Here's Tarasenko back to Lindbaum, then over for Jackman. Jackman back to Lindbaum again. Tarasenko holding. Inside the box is Berglund. Work back along again for a play to be made by Tarasenko. Steps and shoots, and that blocked aside by Miller. No possession established. Now Oshia shot, blocked, and then possession is established by Glenn Denning. It's going to be a penalty on Kyle Quincy, and it's not a good penalty at all, especially in a scoreless game. Quincy, 27 in red, battling with Oshie, and then right there, the quick shot to the face of TJ Oshie, right in front of the official. And a power play chance for the second time here in the second period. Eddie, that's a good pickup because Thomas Yurko thought he was going to get called for something earlier in the sequence, so the officials snooped out the right guy, Kyle Quincy. Guilt is a powerful thing, isn't it? <laughs> this tie-up, it comes onto the back for the walk across by Steen, and then handed to Tarasenko, feathers it through to Steen. Then Jaden Schwartz. Schwartz dropped it on back. Steen holds on there. Gave it back to Tarasenko. Shoots one, and it's wide. Settled down there by Schwartz, but pushed off Erickson. Then twisted on across. Tarasenko threw one, and it went through the crease wide. And then Howard tumbles down to the ice. His stick is not in his possession, but he made the stop anyway. Now he grabs the stick. And it's cleared back down by Anderson. Good time save there from Jimmy Howard on Yaskin right in front of the net. Beautiful play from below the goal line by the Blues. This is becoming a robust slot area present type game for both teams. Around this curled on near Smith, but it was golfed away, and then Schwartz tried to center one in front, and it's thrown back down by Glenn Denning yet again. Here mentioned Glenn Denning out of Michigan, coached by Red Berenson, who played for both of these teams and coached Michigan in the Big Ten final last night here. And they had to do a complete redo of the ice from last night on because all the logos had to be reapplied. The NCAA does not like commercial advertising, and boy, that's a lot of work to take it all away and put it back in. Al Sabatka's crew worked all night. Al hasn't slept yet. The ice temperature is five. Don't worry, he's fine. Drub back up and then bounced on near Erickson, cleared along, but it is sent to the side of the net. Back is it, John, and it flew wide. Now Steen with 28 to go. Chipped on along, Oshi to get it there, twisted it back in deep and around to get it. His helm fired it around the boards, but it is kept alive again by Stastny. Shovels it back to the corner to Oshi. Wanted to step by Cronwall, decided the better of it, then back to Stastny again. Petrangelo with it. 12 seconds left, power play. Paul Stastny sent it along. It's taken back up the boards and dropped in deep by Steen. An attempt by Bacchus was blocked off. Bacchus with it again. Hands it around behind to Oshi. Oshi threw one in front. It skittered back out. Out of the box is Quincy racing after the puck. And he's able to move in and a drive. And that one went wide. Rattled on around the helm. Threw one in front. That one kicked aside. And then it's played by Petrangelo. Oh, that was very close to being offside. I actually thought from my vantage point that Quincy was in ahead of the puck. He created a heck of a chance. And as a player in a penalty box, that's what you dream of. You dream of a chance that... The puck is exiting the defensive zone, and you might have an opportunity to get a breakaway. 
coming out of the penalty box. Abdelkader in an onside play got it on over. Zetterberg tried to feed in front and careened on back and is punched along one handedly by Smith. Well, the Jokin wasn't ready for that breakout pass from Chris Butler. That's why there was a turnover. It is Abdelkader. But then that cut by Ott and steered on back. In their last six games, the Blues have had shutouts three times. Two by Brian Elliott and one by Jake Allen. Both teams with a shutout now. Jackman saw that one blocked away to the glass by Jimmy Howard. Turning along to the outside is Ott with it. Ott got it back. A drive by Bowmeister is sealed up by Howard. Both goalies look fine. If this were the playoffs, we could be here into the evening. No score. <laughs> Welcome back to Detroit. Doc was talking about excellence in goaltending. Sometimes you got to be excellent even though you don't have all your equipment. Dimitri Askin loses his, or causes Jimmy Howard to lose his stick. And Howard, the left pad comes up large, Eddie. Talked about Kyle Quincy. Here's the puck, right? Look at Quincy. I mean, look where he is. I mean, he's over in this area here, clearly offside, and got a great chance as it just went to pass the far post of Jay Gallon. It is an imperfect science sometimes as this bounces on over for Helm, able to hand it around behind. And long this goes ahead for Tatar, and that is called back because he strayed over. Jean Morin makes the call there. Area pass from Kyle Quincy to the streaking Thomas Tatar. Almost a set play, at Ian Bach. And not a bad idea there to try to. Catch a defenseman, Bo Meester and McCulloch, flat footed. Just get it into an area. Use the boards if you can. And just throw it right in. And offside on the Redmonds. Ball start. Waved out. Is Glenn Denning. It's almost one of those timing patterns like in football, where you see a quarterback just throw it to an area of the field so the receiver can run right into it, same type of play there. Oh, I'm seeing more of that now. Do you notice that? I just, uh, I almost uh, eye to eye contact and recognizing, you know, where it is. But to Pierre's point, sometimes those plays are set up and you get into those controlled breakouts where there's not a lot of pressure coming. Well, here's Yurko. Yurko steamed it back in. It careened off the shelf and around now for Butler to be closed in on by Miller. Bergland around behind and a penalty coming up and the stick came up high. Glenn Denning is the guy that they caught. And so another power play for the Blues. Yeah, right in those, uh, right in that right wing corner to the left of Jake Allen. And I believe it was Chris Butler that was in the corner and just threw his head up right away. Pressure from one side. Yeah, right there, Glenn Denning gets the hands up and instead of playing the puck there, he comes in to try to make contact. And there you see Butler take the left hand, put it up around the face. And he explained to the young players out there what you would have liked to have seen Glenn Denning do in that situation. Yeah, I mean, that situation, just bury your stick on the ice, play the puck. He's already got contact. Can't make a play if your stick is down below. You got a good chance of it hitting it, but carry it up like that. Good chance to end up in the box. Here's Steen faking the drive, and then a great stop made by Howard through a screen. Another shot ricocheted wide as Tarasenko brought his best from the right wing circle, and somehow or other Howard was able to block it off. Tarasenko there gives it on back to Steen, then across to Schwartz. Then Tarasenko for the shot that's tipped to the glass as Anderson got in the way. Another block shot for the Red Wings while short-handed. Shahan. I'm sorry, Dr. Shahan had the first boy. one. Oh boy, that could be a penalty. They're going to check that right now. Did that go out of play? What, the clear back down yeah. you're talking about? Yes. Here. The St. Louis Blues thought it went out of play. Here's Schwartz bringing it back. Then along for Backus. And then Miller. Would that kind of a play be subject to a coach's challenge in the future if there was one? I would hope so. And back down this one goes. Nearing the halfway point of this power play. Third in a row for the St. Louis Blues. No score nearing the halfway point of regulation time. Nudged on ahead and tumbling down was Oshie. And the puck wound up going off the referee to Steen. This is the game in hand the Blues have in the Central Division race on Nashville. The two teams have the same number of points. Brought on now by Steen. Delays. Tries to fight it on through and it went off Miller but is taken by Smith. Oh, was he ever crunched by Bacchus? Puck to the back and shaken back off. 
Back is near the front of the net to the back, Petrangelo. Then across it comes to Steen, walks in, shot one blocked away by Howard. Very calmly, Jimmy Howard handling things well in the goal for Detroit. Steen yet again, and a shot, score! Alex Steen let it go, it's the first goal of the game and a power play goal. Well, you keep taking penalties, something bad's going to happen to you. Detroit with a bad penalty in the offensive zone. Thomas Steen just threw it through a maze of players, and Jimmy Howard can't find a way to see it. I mean, that's a beautiful shot by Steen, and a fantastic job of setting up a power play, Eddie. Well, what I want everybody to keep an eye on Steen is, is watch what he does, how he brings this puck, and he doesn't shoot it right away. He just is a little bit of a drag. He changes the angle, he holds, he holds, and now he just is able to get it past the layer of penalty killers for the Red Wings. But a heads-up play there from Steen, and a great screen in front of the net by David Backus. Eighth power play goal of the year and 23rd for Steen and a 1-0 Blues lead. And it wasn't one of those big heavy roof picklers either, a big slap shot, it was just a quick little wrist to but that front presence. Brought back ahead and tucked along, but swept out by DeKaiser on the try by Jokinen. Ahead now it comes and can be played by Bomeister around behind. First one there, Eric Cole. Upstate New Yorker sees this one played to the outside by Zetterberg and then a troublesome pass that has to be skated down by DeKaiser. So it's Quincy. Canceled out by Bomeister, retrieved by Zetterberg, walled there by Ott. The two of them tumble down a second time. And moving off with it is Jokin. McCulloch gave it back. Bomeister hands on to Tarasenko. What'll he do this time? Let a shot go that ricocheted across. Knife back up the board. Schwartz with one. And then again, it is turned on back up. And a two-on-two -two developing as out comes to Tar. Blues get plenty of guys back. And here's a chance for Schwartz moving in all along. Save. Rebound. Skated down there and trying to... Throw one out in front was Laterra, but instead it's carried back up by the Red Wings. Jimmy Howard keeping his team in here after that one wound up filtering through, jammed on around to Tarasenko, and Tarasenko pivots back. Great effort there by Jaden Schwartz on the back check to create that chance. Pass Schwartz and down for an icing with 8.49 to go in the second and a 1-0 Blues lead. Well, the former graduate of the Tri-City Storm of the United States Hockey League and Colorado College Jaden Schwartz comes all the way back. Great pressure. Turnover, and then Schwartz is off to the races because the Red Wings are in the middle of a change. Quality all-around shift there from Jaden Schwartz. You got a timeout being called by Ken Hitchcock right now. That's how fine the margins are for his team. Fatigue group, one nothing game on the road. He's called a timeout. Yeah, back-to-back -back games. Uh, game yesterday afternoon in St. Paul against the Minnesota Wild. Road trip. Understanding that uh, players need a little bit of a breather after a long, hard work and shift. You know, you talk about Jaden Schwartz, what a career he's had so far. He's just in the infancy of that career, but consistency is a big part of being a good player in this league. Last year he had 25 goals. This year he's already got 24 goals. He's going to be an extremely consistent player for these St. Louis Blues for a long time. 14 pick overall in the 2010 draft, but just a tremendous character player with serious skill. Yeah, more opportunity, more front and center shifts. And we talked about a little bit earlier with the, the emergence of Vladimir Tarasenko. I mean, the Blues are a much deeper team and, in my opinion, many more offensive different makers, difference makers now than they've had in the past. So not maybe a a crash one and done playoff round this year. It might go farther, you were saying. It comes down, look, it all comes down to matchups, who you play, when you play them, are you healthy, and we all know it comes down, can you get a key save at the most crucial point of a, of a game or a series? And I still go back to that series last year against Chicago. I don't believe the difference with the goaltending. There's just that the Blackhawks have more proven offensive difference makers than the Blues did. And you look at what Doug Armstrong has done with the signings of Stastny and in, you know, bringing over Laterra, and they've upgraded their offensive side of the game without question. Well, here's Shidlitsky bringing it on. Led one through to Tatar, surrounded there, and it's dashed on back away from Shidlitsky and down. And it's Smith. Eight and a quarter minutes to go, second period. Steen with the only goal in the game. 
This one bounces on back, and turning for that is Butler, able to one-hand it away from Abdelkader, who swoops right in on Petrangelo. Gaskin started it back ahead. Paul Stastny brings it further. Shot one off the glass wide, and it's jammed around there and taken on by Erickson. Jonathan Erickson saw it rescued by Yashin for St. Louis. Still, Erickson goes to work on his man. Tumbling down for a moment was Steen. Meanwhile, it's chopped along and into some traffic. Down went Cronwall, and they press it to the boards. And it is Erickson to take it. it took a while, didn't it? Here's Cronwall ahead, feeding one back up the wing, and it's right on the stick of Cole. Here's Cole a shot, and that answered by Allen. Cole again around behind, shoved off by Butler. Turning with it is Abdelkader. To the back it came for the Kaiser shot. Off the skate of Cole in front. Touch to him, side of the net, rising backhander. Got the glass. Back is able to turn it along, and it's shaken back high and back down, and it hops right in toward the goal, and there is no icing on the play. So seven minutes to go. The shots are 17-13 Blues. They have nine this period to the Red Wings seven. Glenn Denning able to bring it ahead. Almost a handcuffing pass, but Yurt go along to Glenn Denning again. Down he sits, jamming at it. Bo Meester. And still they work. Miller shuttled it along. Reeves tried to close it off there, locked up with Yurko. Reeves again able to hoist one out that's gloved down by Zidlitsky and touched on across to Smith. And punched right back down, and this will go for no icing. The initial signal was made, but they decided it was close enough to wave it off. Meanwhile, this has popped onto center, and Anderson tried to guide it along, got it only as far as the Benick McCollum. 6.20 to go in this period. Right back ahead, it goes off. Jokin and steals it away. Jokin and a shot and a save made by Howard. There have been some blues alone in this period, getting chances on Detroit. Howard shut those off, but there was one by Steen. He didn't. Which every team in this league wants their team to have an identity. What's the St. Louis Blues identity going into the playoffs? Well, for us to win, we got to be uh, kind of a, a north team through the neutral zone and then control the puck in the offensive zone. We're best when we uh, stay patient in the offensive zone rather than just fire away. And if we do that, then we can wear teams down. That's that's kind of the formula that's worked for four years, and hopefully we can keep going with it. Thanks very much, Kevin. Thanks. There was a time when um, this was wire. They didn't have to take time to change it, but that was Ted Lindsay and Gordy House time at the old Olympia. Uh, while they tend to this, we will tend to this. On the left is Doug Armstrong, president of hockey operations, GM, alternate governor. And he is there with the chopper, senior advisor to the general manager, Al McGinnis. One can really shoot and one can really make decisions on players. Jokinen from Toronto, Bortuzzo from Pittsburgh, McCulloch from Arizona at the trade deadline. Eddie, how hard did Al McGinnis shoot the puck? <laughs> Wow, with a wood stick, did too. Not, yeah, did not see it. Heard it a lot. How many of those did you happen to block? You, did remember you not... one, one, uh, one on purpose. That, yeah, it, that did not... Uh, actually, I'll sh actually show you the indentation, Doc, that it left in my uh, my left shin. Yeah. A nice little hole there. Discolored there. Yeah. <laughs> we, I know we are television, but there's some things we choose not to show. Uh, this is cleared back down the ice and another icing results and the fans are upset about that. It has been a sort of cantankerous day for the linesmen, the coaches, the players and everyone else. Uh, frustration is high. A couple of icings have been called back. This one disputed some. Yeah, palms were up on the uh, Red Wing bench there with uh, Mike Babcock and Tony Granato. One nothing game, the Blues lead with 6.06 to go here in the second. And chased out, boy, there have been a lot of those today too. Laterra leaves, Schwartz is in to go with Shahan. Fed on to the back, Butler with the shot, is really a pass off the boards. Schwartz tried to play it there. Chris is a good guy, we were cutting him some slack there. I think it really was intended as a pass, they wanted to take advantage of the boards, but he was off, well, it just happened. Here's Shahan touching it along, and it trickles on further, can be kept alive, but thrown 
to a blind corner that is occupied now by Quincy. I always have that excuse here playing at the Joe is that if you miss the net by five or six feet, you just say you're trying to play that slingshot effect off the boards. <laughs> I was trying to pass to a guy. I don't yeah, know where right, he was. Exactly. <laughs> I had my guy. That one went through Berglund and down, and they rule an icing on that play with 5.28 to go here in the second. We've talked some about the coaches today. Ken Hitchcock and Mike Babcock have long known one another since their days in Western Canada. Growing up there and going to coaching clinics conducted by Claire Drake. Mike Babcock says he is the John Wooden of Canada from the University of Alberta at Edmonton. And those clinics were in the summertime and a lot of guys had dreams of being NHL coaches that attended those clinics and would talk after prolonged stretches with Claire Drake. I had him as an assistant coach in Winnipeg with the Winnipeg Jets back in the uh, early you? 90s, yes. Some of those coaches Doc's alluding to, Mike Johnston of the Pittsburgh Penguins right now, Tom Rennie who coached forever in New York and in Vancouver, Perry Pern who's an assistant coach in the league, the late Wayne Fleming who coached in the National Hockey League, and it was a group led by Claire Drake, Wayne Fleming, Dave King, and George Kingston that created the program of excellence in Canada, which they really think is the backbone to how they develop players. Also attending, Bill Peters, now with Carolina, Willie Desjardins, now with Vancouver, Barry Trotz, now with Washington. I'd say Claire had an impact. Oh, man. And all those guys that had dreams 25, 30 years ago have seen them realized now being head coaches in the NHL. This one is scaled back along and will be chased down by Zidlitsky with five minutes and the clock moving. Be kind of odd if it weren't bunted aside there by Howard and carried on now by Zidlitsky. But we have had some weird things with clocks today as players from both sides tumble. And this is played back along now by Bomeister and he flipped it back in. And icing is called on the play. Check out birthdays today. Warren Skorodensky, Mike Smith, Hanu Verta, Dunk Wilson, Dave Keon. Todd Ewan, Kelly Eklund, Sven Butenshaw, Bobby Leader, John Marks, and the former announcer for the Syracuse team in the Eastern Hockey League, Bob Costas, celebrating a birthday today. <laughs> John Marks, the uh, former Blackhawk player and played his college hockey at North Dakota, now the head coach and general manager of the uh, Fargo Force of the United States Hockey League. He used to arrive in ill humor when he played, Eddie. He was a large human. Yes, he still he is. I mean, he's a big, he can still play. I mean, he's <laughs> six foot three, six foot four. A big, heavy left winger. This is turned back over now to Yurko. Dropped it for Miller, but he was headed another direction, and so this comes back out. Four and a quarter to go here in the second period. Circle to circle, it's DeKaiser across to Quincy, and a pass shunted on now for Glenn Denning to backhand in. Out to get it and send it along further now was Allen. Laid on back for the take and the throw back down off the shelf. It goes back for another icing against the Blues. All right, let's see what's ahead here. Check that calendar, Mr. Oche. Well, tonight uh, at MSG, the Ducks will be there to take on the Rangers, and then tomorrow on the NHL Network, the Kings and Devils, Tuesday night on NBCSN, the Kings and Rangers. And then on Wednesday night, rivalry will be in Philadelphia for the Flyers and the Blackhawks. And the Kings are starting to sense some urgency. Recall Mike Richards today for Manchester in the American Hockey League. That the top team in the East in the AHL, and Mike's probably had a lot to do with that. Meanwhile, the battling continues. It's knifed away from Zetterberg, touched on by Zidlitsky, and then held by Abdelkader and played back towards Zidlitsky. Tries to swagger from the corner and no sale there. Pretty strong defensive play is made by Bomeister. Back up comes Ott and he pushed it back in deep and going to play this. But seeing another icing is Smith. Yeah, that was a really good play by Bomeister. Here talked about the uh, penalty by Glenn Denning a little bit earlier, but Bomeister defending in his own zone. One hand on the stick. It's the way you defend in your own zone. Lead with your stick. Make life really difficult for the offensive player. It happened to be Zidlitsky, a defenseman, moving in. That's the way you defend in your own zone. Get that stick buried on the ice. Force the puck area to come through. Your stick. Rattled around Yashkin, able to flip it further, but it was kept alive by the Red Wings. Yashkin watching here as it's a nice finesse move and then trying to move to the front of the net was Nyquist, but now it is Erickson. Erickson waits and throws one off the pad of Allen, whacked along. Erickson able to take it further, chopped on now. Nyquist dueling there with Ott. They cancel, and it's brushed back out to center where it can be played by Cronwall. 
touched over to Erickson. Erickson able to motor along, gains the zone himself, and shoved to the corner for Polkin. He moves in there, but it's touched along by Bomeister. Meanwhile, the battle on, and Ott got it back, but not out. Cronwall a shot that skittered right in front and is covered by Allen. That hurt Gaskin. Oh, boy, did it ever got him in the hand, Eddie. Nick Cronwall can bring the heat. Gaskin got in the lane. And paying a price right off the... It was a left hand. He was almost playing goal in center ice there. Yeah, it goes right off the left hand. He had his hand open, and... What you try to teach young hockey players is to keep that, you know, turn your hand over, show them, show them the back of your hand. And because that's where you have the most protection, but when you have it exposed and you have your palm out, there's not a lot of protection there. So if you can get that hand out like that, and it happens really quick. Did a good job there by Yaskin to get in that shooting lane, and Cromwell, really good shot. Those hands are good too. He had 99 points his last year, junior in Moncton. Nudged across. Oh, she couldn't come up with that one. Tatar could. Nudged one that came right to Bacchus. Bacchus handed it across. Oh, she pulled, got it on to Bacchus, who has to recover off the boards, and centered one for Oshi. Defended there by DeKaiser. Wedged off by DeKaiser. Coming by is Bergwin, and he got that one. They played yesterday. Second time on this trip, they played two games in less than 24 hours. Here's a shot that is nubbed down and can be played along off of Howard to Quincy. Long toss ahead, skip back down the ice and goes for another icing. Watch the NHL on NBC Live on your laptop, tablet or smartphone with NBC Sports Live Extra. Download the app or go to NBCSports.com slash Live Extra and watch the biggest events anywhere, anytime. Mentioned that Doc St. Louis playing back to back for the Red Wings. They played Thursday night down in Florida against the Panthers, Friday, Friday night against Tampa, and then they play an afternoon game, an early afternoon game here on Sunday. So, really, I mean, three games in less than four days for the Red Wings. And if you're the Blues, you certainly know that. You want to play a hard, heavy game, as uh, Ken Hitchcock alluded to with Pierre, to one of their strengths. Make you pay for every inch of ice. When you lose two and you lose four of your last five, somehow or other you don't have a lot of opening, but here's an opening for Helm. Gave it back to Tatar, and the shot was blocked off by Jackman. And then tucked wrapped back along. It will be regathered and backhanded by Erickson. Stepping to it is Tatar. Tatar walked it on, tried to get one in front, but it canceled right back near him. Then tumbling down to the ice is Schwartz, taking it as Tatar, rifled it on back. Erickson there, drive, and that deflected wide. Hopping to that one and swatting it on back was Helm. Cronwall filtered it through. Erickson a shot, and that one went off the stick of Schwartz. Retrieved now by Tatar. Tired bunch of blues out there as Tatar swirls. Got it on back, some trouble there, and it's chopped on back to center ice. And they can finally get maybe part of a change. They're standing there, but no one can come off. Blasted back in by Erickson, and around it goes. Lindbaum run into there. Meanwhile, it chipped on across. Bomeister nudges on. Schwartz brings it further with Tarasenko, and Howard blocked it away. And now the fire wagon change at the Blues bench near Pierre. Oh, Tarasenko and uh, Jackman both had each other's stick. Jackman lost his stick. Tarasenko gave his stick to Jackman, and then Tarasenko picked up Jackman's stick over about 40 seconds of that shift. They were playing with the uh, wrong equipment, but they had a stick in their hand, most importantly. Pivoting on back now is Zidlitsky. Three quarters of a minute to go in the second period. And neither team scored at all in the first, but just the power play goal by Steen in the second. Jokinen trickled it back along, and it is Smith able to pivot away from Reeves. Flexed along, and Jokinen canceled it, but then it is thrown by Zidlitsky. It went off Reeves. Reeves pulling his way in further. Down to the ice he went, and it's Smith stepping away. Zidlitsky got in the way of Ott, and it's Smith connecting back ahead to Miller. Drew Miller in the last 17 seconds sent it right back in deep. Bunted right on to Miller again. Got help from Glenn Denning behind. Angled one off, but that'll be collared by Reeves. Lugged ahead in the last six. Given back on Petrangelo there. Shakes it back in. Quincy to play it. Two seconds and one. And that's it for a pair of periods here at Joe Lewis in Detroit with a 1-0 Blues lead after two. Coming up on the Discover Card Intermission Report, Liam, Mike, and JR, the undisciplined Red Wings and the Ducks and Rangers battle tonight. The Ducks with 99, the Rangers with 97 points, Montreal 99 and St. Louis 96. It's a cluster of teams going for the President's Trophy, and after two, one of those teams, the Blues lead 1-0.
at Joe Louis Arena, it was the Big Ten Tournament Final, Minnesota and Michigan. Michigan there got a goal. It was 2-2 at the end of two periods of play. Minnesota came on and won the contest 4-2. Senior forward Travis Boyd had two goals. Adam Wilcox, the goaltender, 24 saves, his 73rd career win, most among active NCAA goalies. The first conference playoff championship since 2007 for the Golden Gophers. And there's a guy that played at Michigan State and won the national championship in overtime for the Spartans against Boston College in 2007, Justin Abdelkader, with four shots today of the Red Wings' total of 15. And a guy that played for Minnesota last night that's now property of the Buffalo Sabres, Hudson Fashion, he reminds me a lot of Justin Abdelkader. Tremendous pro prospect. Fashion has a lot of offensive upside. Well, here's Butler, chased down by Cole in this tight 1-0 game. 34 total shoots in the game. Oh, that went off Butler's he scores! What a strange set of circumstances for Eric Cole to score and tie the game. Now, this puck went right off the face of Chris Butler. The shot by Abdelkader hits Butler and it goes right to Eric Cole and he's able to elevate that rolling puck up and over Jake Allen. Assist to Mike Babcock. He started the game with Abdelkader, Zetterberg and Nyquist. He says that wasn't working out. He puts Eric Cole up there and Eric Cole pays him back. 21st goal for Cole, three here as a Detroit Red Wing. And this is his 10th game. So we are even in what has been a sticky close to the best contest. Will it change as the result of this goal? It is huge for both. We mentioned earlier the implications for the division lead that today St. Louis shares with Nashville. And this their game in hand on Nashville as we go down the bumpy stretch just a little under three weeks to go. The kneeling block by Shahan. But for Detroit it's significant too. They are being chased by the wild card team, the Boston Bruins, who are holding on to the wild card and being challenged greatly by Ottawa and somewhat by Florida. Directed back in by Shahan, retrieved though by Tatar. Tatar tries to play, cannot. Lindbaum, and then along for Laterra, able to pop one along that is Kept alive by Tatar while Prone got it onto Helm. That one skipped off one of the Blues and hopped out of play, no penalty. Kyle Quincy's made some real aggressive board plays in the offensive zone for Detroit, Eddie. And here's another example of Quincy coming down here. He's reading the play. You can see him to the left of your screen. And eventually pitches down hard, keep the play alive, create more second chance opportunities for the Red Wings. Now you're going to play like that. You better have that trust factor. That discipline within the system to know that you're going to be that aggressive as a defenseman that somebody better be back there to, to bail you out. And that particular play that Pierre just showed, it's exactly what the Red Wings had. Zetterberg won this one back and a dismiss there. Oh, a good solid crunch on him by Ryan Reed. A couple of those here this afternoon. Boy, that's textbook hitting. No stick on the ice, shoulder to shoulder. No dis no undisciplined play. Smart play by Reeves. Outlet pass went ahead now for Abdelkader. Wanted to filter it on to Smith. But we don't get what we want every time. And so this is shuttled on back by Cole. Cole has even this game very early in the third period at one each. And here's Abdelkader moving on in. Save made by Allen. He got the pad on it. Oh, he was going to that same side where he hit the post back in the first period. He had Allen leaning to his glove side. And he tried to come back the other way and just did not get it short side enough. And there's that left wing stretch pass again for Detroit. We saw it all second period. There it was in the third. Carried ahead by Anderson. Dropped it on off. Polkin in a shot. And it's blocked there by McCulloch. And he's able to deal with all this in traffic and just waits. That's experience. Flips it on out to center and directed on, but skittered on through for Quincy and jammed on in by Nyquist. So Allen inside the trapezoid, hoists it on around. Polkinen waiting there, jabbed it on further, but it ricocheted and he has to contest again with Steen. McCulloch got a mouthful of puck right there. He's reaching for his mouth. I think he's bleeding. 
This is trickled back in again by Anderson. Tries to get there. McCulloch back to play it. Jabbed it back up the boards. Erickson cut it off but tumbled. And we get a penalty call being made by the referee Eric Furlat from center. Eddie, they've been pinching down aggressively the Detroit side of things. And there's Jonathan Erickson pinching down. He gets tripped down by Paul Stastny. Let me go back to that chance for Justin to abdicate. I want everybody just to keep an eye on the movement of Jake Allen because when this shot comes, watch Allen move to his left before the puck up. See him moving to his left, and Abdelkader was trying to come back the other way. If he makes that shot he did in the first period, he got a 2-1 lead here for the Red Wings. Had a great pick up there by our crew. So the power play wheels into motion again. Fourth opportunity of the day and empty so far. They've scored in 10 of the last 11 games, these Red Wings. It is Helm sending it across. Settled down by Cole, touched on by Zhidlitsky. And so it's Helm circling again. Zhidlitsky gave it promptly right back to him. They try over for Cole and the blast is challenged right out again by Allen in a strong save. And Ott plays it back in and comes to the bench for a change. So that's 40 out of a two minute kill. Zhidlitsky drifting now, picks up Polkinen and starts to weave his way out, dropping it on back for Nyquist. Nyquist connects on to Zetterberg, marches right back in, gave it on across and it's Polkinen to retrieve there. Steen watching him as he jammed it on back to the point and it can be walked further, handed on to Zetterberg. Here's Zetterberg a shot, he flew it trying for the top right. It rattled on around and Cronwall will play it. 52 to go, pass misfires for Nyquist, Cronwall going right back in and Allen way out. It slugged along and lifted further by Nyquist and jammed back out again by Schwartz. Quite a challenge there, but Allen answered and was asserting. So now Cronwall, 35 to go on the man advantage, 15.30 to go as of right now, third period of play. Polkinen put it off of Allen's glove and mask and it's floated out of play and that will be a call. That one was an odd way to stop the buck by Jake Allen. Simple play by the Red Wings, just coming down those right wing boards, and he just kind of dropped his glove in front of his chest and just missed it. And a shot from Polkin in, and there you see the reaction from Jake Allen. I don't know if that puck was dipping and diving or not. Touch Barrett Jackman, that's a change in direction. Misread the signal by the official who pointed to the stands, but he was also pointing to where the resulting faceoff was. It was ruled a deflection out of play. My mistake. Back up the boards it comes now for Zhidlitsky. Still on this power play with 12 seconds to go. Cronwall back to Zhidlitsky. Then got it on across for the hold to the outside. And then a shot by Tatar that ricocheted back off Jackman. And Jackman is able to crank it back down. Play there from Ott. Little interference there on Thomas Tatar. Allowed Jackman to get to that puck. And Send it down. We are back to full strength, and we are even on the scoreboard at one with 5-10 played in the third. Blues with the advantage in shots, 19 to 18. Marching ahead and lifting it in is Glenn Denning. Around it curled now. Lindbaum run into by Yurko. Meanwhile, back up with it and tucking it across with Schwartz, but it's tangled up in skates and brought back in by Drew Miller, but then left behind and moving back out is Tarasenko. Walks back up the wing, met there by Drew Miller. Tarasenko fed it on a cross, and a Butler shot is shrugged away high by Jimmy Howard. Banked on out to center and can be carried ahead by Glenn Denning. Sized up there by Lindbaum. Glenn Denning just twirls it on his backhand in, and Butler is run into by Miller. He rolled off that and is able to bring it back and filter it out to Schwartz at center ice. His shot into the catching glove of Howard, and we have a scrap at center. Drew Miller, he ran over Yuri Laterra. And Lindbaum going at it now. That's East Lansing versus Helsinki. That's a pretty good job by Drew Miller against a very big guy in Lindbaum. Lindbaum came right after him. The seconds are in the ring and the bout is over. We'll get the judge's decision with 14.05 to go in the third. Wow. Yeah, that's where it starts right there. You see Laterra getting run from behind by Drew Miller and Lindbaum skates right to Drew Miller. On the Red Wings side, you wonder if they're 
asking about the uh, instigator there with Lindbaum going right after him. I'll bet that's it. You can see Mike Babcock with some concern. The judges have ruled Drew's brother Ryan says he won. His cousins Kelly Kipp and Kevin said he won. <laughs> That was quite a scrap, though. Guys that you don't normally expect to see doing that, particularly in Miller's case. So now Bacchus and Glenn Denning in a 1-1 tie here in a game that matters. In the standings, and also because of the rivalry a number of years when they played more often than just twice, once in each ring. Here's Erickson floating one ahead, and it skipped on back for McCollum. Shaking up his Yurko. And matching minors for Oshie and Nyquist who are jousting behind the play. <laughs> it is an athletic circus of three rings here. And we're seeing action all over in a 1-1 one -one tie. Well, there's a little bit of room between Oshie and Nyquist, but not for long. These players stay together for a good eight to 10 seconds. They're like Velcro. Never let go of one another at all until they get to the middle of the ice and the official says okay enough's enough we'll have four on four hockey a couple of highly skilled guys are resting now that is real claret there and real ice that you need to bring down the swelling from throwing those rights as both Miller and Lindbaum did so four aside now for the next two minutes or less if there are further penalties McCulloch connected back over to Bowmeister, challenged by Abdelkader, ricocheted along off Bacchus, and then it slipped across. McCulloch got it on to Bacchus. The big captain slowed down at the line by the reach of Smith. Whirled on back, and Smith had to dive to play that. Uncontested for the moment, now reconnects with Jidlitsky. Skating through this is Zetterberg, tucked it back onto Smith, and a drive, and he didn't get much on that one. It came back out off Allen's stick, and then is outletted. And it is Steen going one-on-one -on -one against Zidlitsky. Steen with a shot. Zidlitsky blocked that one. Feathered on now for the take by Zetterberg. Just like in overtime, and maybe we're in overtime already in a low-scoring game. It is filtered by Petrangelo and taken on. Back out by Tarasenko. A lot of ice per man for this guy to work. Tarasenko driving. Forehander save made by Jimmy Howard. And played back out again by Tatar. What a play there by Tarasenko. Backhand, forehand, all in one move. Get a great chance. Alan, else. Alan stoked it away, and it can be played along further now for Petrangelo and then Lutera. Lutera chased on back further by Nick Cronwall, so it's taken on by Butler. Butler shadowed there by Tatar, and Tatar will come to the bench, and a change made. Hopping over the boards is Darren Helm for Detroit. Tarasenko was shot, and it got the glass. Bounced on out and is retrieved by the long-armed Erickson and laid back on for the return pass to him by Helm. Maybe that was two weird sequences. Jonathan Erickson usually plays on the right side, not the left side, and you can see the one time he's really uncomfortable against Tatar. Helm flung that one wide, wants to get it, did, and a save Allen, and the rebound, oh, and Cole could not convert. Terrific concept there from Helm. Along to get this is Quincy, pursued by Berglund. Quincy able to glide right back ahead with it now. Both teams get a man back as the Miners have been served. Walked on by DeKaiser. Dropped back to Nyquist. Able to pull away from one. Still going. Still has it. Knocked away further. Nyquist tried to play it along and got it further for Helm. Through the legs pass. Would not work though to the center. And so it is dumped along after Allen had interceded. Taken by Quincy. Connected back over to DeKaiser. Returned on to Quincy. Hopping away and now taking the pass is Nyquist. Moving right back ahead, Nyquist's shot was stifled there. And then Oshi is able to flip, but Anderson could not cover at the blue line, and so it is loose at center and still battled for, as jamming along for it was Polkinen. But it's Petrangelo on a cross, and Bomeister driving it back in. Stastny moves for that one, cancels with Polkinen, and a shot had to be blocked wide. Played back along again by Glenn Denning to center. 11 minutes to go, third period. 20 saves in this game for Allen. 18 saves for Jimmy Howard. So now Zidlitsky. Long toss is ladled back in by Glenn Denning, who scurries right after it. Out of his net is Allen. Sweeps it along to Bomeister, rubbed out by Glenn Denning. Puck stopped at center by Cronwall. 
So it is Cronwall again. Driving one that is directed back in high by Glenn Denning off the shelf. He's right there to get it. Sealed up by Bomeister. Reaching in Petrangelo. And out of the scrum, it's Bomeister again. Flipping one that's soccered along by Erickson and then swept right back near him. Thrown back in by Reeves. Bounces ahead to Cronwall. Cronwall able to turn away from Jokinen, wants to shake him and does for the moment, giving on to Erickson. Clock winking down to the last 10 minutes of regulation time as of now. 40 shots in the game and only two goals. Brought back ahead by Zetterberg. Has Abdul Kader and throws it in, hoping he can get there. He does, and Jackman closed him off. Then a whack came from Backus. Meanwhile, they continue to work to a side. For the longest time. Before it's taken by Berglund and thrown across, but kept alive by DeKaiser. Sent one around in front that's jabbed at. Partly restrained on that play. And now we're going to get a penalty call coming up against the Blues. Abdul Kader on the delayed call, gave it on back. Quincy able to keep control. Ridden off by Berglund. Quincy shoved down, and they touch. And now, coming back at Berglund is Quincy. As of now, just one penalty, and that on St. Louis, but that could change. Butler is the initial guy to go. That is he. And Abdul Kader in here just testing the material a bit here. All right, we will get the verdict, whether it's just one or more, when we come back in a one-all tie from an arena named for prize fight. <laughs> Well, the genesis of a hockey scrum, physical play, hard play from everybody involved. Barrett Jackman on Justin Ablocator, and then later on in the same sequence, Chris Butler chops down Justin Ablocator. There's the penalty called by Eric Furlat, and then everybody starts to gather and say, I don't like you, you don't like me, let's go. The discussion goes on, and it looks like, Pierre, they're saying it's going to be even out there. And that's why Henrik Zetterberg's not happy talking to Eric, I'm sorry, Ian Walsh, and now Eric Furlight's talking to Mike Babcock here. Until Eric Freine, the public address announcer, tells us. We will not know exactly the specific fouls, but it appears it won't affect manpower on the ice. Zetterberg, I have never seen him this upset with an official. He is just letting Ian Walsh have it. He's furious. He goes back out for the faceoff, and we count five now, Blues in front of Allen and five Red Wings in front of Howard, so it's full. And now Tony Granado's giving it to Ian Walsh, too, from the bench. Zetterberg waved out. Cole steps in. And he and Steen are jousting verbally with one another. This thing's taken on a life of its own. Smith threw it back in, around and curl to Bomeister. Helped along by McCulloch. Yaskin tried to play further, no luck. Outletted by Stastny and lugged on by Bomeister. Bomeister with a shot, pad stop made by Jimmy Howard, and it bounced right over for Zetterberg. That one went off the skates of Cole to center. I don't think Bomeister realized there was an high band situation there. He had Yaskin right in behind him. If he drops in the puck, get a better angle at the net. Stastny trying to get by, saying no foul until he swatted Stastny, and then Stastny comes back with a stick jab of his own. Don't take that. That's what Peter would say. He's watching in Slovakia. Early evening there. Tarasenko trying to work to the outside. Ripped it around the boards, and it hopped on now to Schwartz. Away from Zidlitsky. Schwartz hooked one that came all the way to the back. 
And it's Tarasenko trying to get by. Defended every inch of the way by Yurko. Now he's free, and the shot went off Smith and wide. Another try, and reaching for it was Howard. And then a player tumbling down is Schwartz with a little help from Smith, and he was also Schwartz trying to help out Howard who did not want his help. Erickson able to spin one that's cut off by Laterra and sent on back. Jackman out of the confusion gave it back across to Petrangelo and then it's walked across by Tarasenko to Petrangelo. Moving right in, circles around behind. He's got Schwartz in the blue paint. Tarasenko dubbed his shot into the corner. It's played by Erickson. Then Helm, then knocked down, but must be sheltered at center and played along by Petrangelo and sent in further by Tarasenko. And everybody, when he's knocked down, will respond with just a little tap to say, I'm still here. Tarasenko to the bench for a change. Little over seven and a half to go, third period. Whacked on by Glenn Denning. Played along further by McCulloch away from the reach of Oshie and across it came for Bomeister to connect back on. Berglund marches ahead, Oshie on the wing, but it is lost at the line and out of all of that offside and out of all of that, more snarl. Well, we've been talking about Vladdy Tarasenko a lot this afternoon. Here's an example of why escape ability, strength in the puck and a lightning quick release against Thomas Yurko, Eddie. Go back to that play. Here's that three on two. Here's Jay Bowmeister. All he's got to do is take a quick look and look at the Red Wings. They're recognizing this is a three on two. I mean, there's a lot going on. He just dropped that puck there. And I don't know if Yaskin's yelling or not, or, but Bowmeister, as soon as you enter the zone like that, you can count and see its odd man situation. All you got to do is just take a quick look over your shoulder. Depending on what side of the ice is it, it is, you just take a quick look and realize that, hey, maybe if I drop the puck, now the defense has got to adjust. If you don't make a pass, it's easy to defend and an easy save there for Jimmy Howard. We have clock issues. That's why we have a delay. The penalties are not up on the clock here on the scoreboard. Off this tie-up, it is pulled free by Anderson. And a backhand grab by Allen. Way back along, Glenn Denning, chopped one in front. Oh, and a save made by Allen on Anderson. Penalty is coming up. And it's going to be a hooking call. And the Blues will be shorthanded. McCulloch to the box. The Red Wings to the power play. They've trailed during a great deal of this game, 1-0 before tying it early in the third. Aggressive four-check play. Luke Lendenning keeps it alive, create the second chance opportunity, and Timo Polkin and gets hauled down from behind by number six, Sabina McCulloch, right there. Oh, a terrific save there from Jake Allen off of Anderson, but that initial play with fresh players on the ice for the Red Wings draw that penalty. Off the tie-up, it went through Abdelkader, who recovered, but had to duel with Petrangelo, who tumbles down. Abdelkader with the puck. Threw one that ricocheted across to be taken by Steen and lobbed back down. So Howard glides out to handle this one with just under seven minutes to go in the third period. If still tied, a five-minute sudden death overtime. If still tied after that, there will be a shootout. We would guess Oshie would be one of the contestants based on the Olympics and based on his percentage, which is enormous. 51.7% in shootouts for that guy. Brought ahead now by Nyquist. Nyquist played it over, Abdelkader with it there. Floated it back in and Nyquist further. Through the traffic, got it for Zetterberg to hand on across. Cronwall returned it to him. Zetterberg dangling on the outside, backhanded one through the crease and through the legs of Abdelkader. Can be played along further. But Cronwall sees it cleared back down on Howard. Hey, hey, go. Halfway through the penalty kill for the Blues. Nyquist able to dip the shoulder and march on ahead. Gains the zone, but twisted one that came right in on Allen. Shuttled it aside and nearly handcuffed Petrangelo, who's ridden to the boards by Yurko. To the back it comes. Fed across by Zidlitsky and broken up. It's going to be a two-on-one. Steen moving back up with Ott. Zidlitsky back. It's fed to Ott, and he had trouble taking the pass. Back the other way, it might be an odd man rush there. Red Wings racing out, Zetterberg has to cross, and then it is lost to the boards and pushed right back in again. So Zidlitsky with 20 to go on his team's power play. 
Yurko brings it over and spirits it back in. Around it goes near Lindbaum, but it's taken off. Polkinen tried to drop a pass in front. That didn't work. Just continues to circle the wagons, and it's lost by uh, into Cole there in the battle to a side at the half boards. It's finally won by Bacchus and cleared back down. Penalty time is up. The Blues have killed it off. Polkinen takes the puck and leaves it there for Kyle Quincy. Four minutes, 50 seconds left in the third. Steen from Petrangelo and Stastny over an hour ago. Here's Tarasenko with a shot. Oh, and a save made by Howard. A strong shot by Tarasenko, and Howard got it. And then Cole scored early in this period to tie it from Applicator. So we're stuck at one, but it's okay. Look at the player profile with insights from SAP. You see David Backus there, and you see him on this list of guys. Most points in the NHL in the last 10 days, Johnny Goudreau of Calgary is first. David Backus with one point could be tied for second. The leaderboard is rather jammed. And Jimmy Howard hangs on yet again. Eddie and Doc, how about Johnny Goudreau for Rookie of the Year? Calgary, what a season he's had. Right now they are two points ahead of Los Angeles for third in the last secure playoff berth in the Pacific. One to the back now and walked on and then lost by Petrangelo, but he takes care of Glendening. Meanwhile, it is Petrangelo yet again. Firing one and Jimmy Howard came up with that and Tatar came up with that and lofts a high pass to center that winds up being jammed on by Butler, sent back in, but we get a stoppage of play on a hand pass in neutral ice. Well, not a lot of work for both goaltenders here, but you get to this point in the game, just get the puck in that. You never know, good idea there from, from Alex Petrangelo and a good save from Jimmy Howard. Dimitri Askin not on the ice with his usual line mates. Now it's Steve Ott playing instead of Yaskin, Christine and Stastny. Stepping in, Abdelkader, denied though by McCulloch. Cole couldn't get there because of Ott. And so it is marched back up by Bomeister, given back onto Steen, pirouettes away from Smith, who was with him all the way, and it's lifted back out again. There is a stickless player out there, but apparently has gotten another one. Steve Ott. I was involved with a jealousy with Eric Cole. Jidlitsky tried to play it ahead, dragged on by Applicator, and he steps free with it now. Sends it on back now for Cole. Cole jammed one to Zetterberg, controls from skate to stick, gets the return from Jidlitsky, moves on, shooting one, and a save made by Allen. And a confident save made by Jake Allen, Eddie, seeing through traffic and ripping it out of the air. Good puck distribution. Henrik Zetterberg tries to fool him short side and just pull it out and show everybody, yeah, I'm there. Six years a student at the Dave Alexander Goalie School. Two years an instructor. Eight years with one school. I know guys that attended college and did that. Along with this now comes Nyquist. Nyquist holds to the outside, tried to shoot, could not. And then it's dropped back out to center ice again by Jokin. Here's Cronwall. And ahead now, marching on his Glenn Denning, handed it over to Nyquist, tried to jam one on a sliding block made there by Jackman. Then Bacchus off the short glass and out to center. Oshi twirls, hands it on. Lindbaum got there, but so did Cronwall. Now it's Oji, Oshi bringing it ahead, wiped out by Cronwall. Not in the normal fashion, but it worked. Jammed back by Cronwall, worked on by Berglund. And then it's played back up and comes onto the point. Here's Lindbaum a shot, and he got the glass with it. Rolled off the shelf and is thrown by Laterra across the net mouth wide. Oshie sparring there with a helmetless player, Cronwall. Meanwhile, they continue to joust as it goes to the corner. Erickson there. Chopped on and Cronwall hurries a feed onto Miller, then off of Nyquist. Back out again, it comes to be played by Lindbaum with 2.40 to go in regulation time. Petrangelo able to bring it ahead. Shot one that ricocheted to the glass, off of the Kaiser, rolled off the shelf, and Schwartz was carried off there by Quincy. Right back rushing on to Shahan. Shahan with an opening up the side. Shahan whirling around behind, still holding on. He 
He's got Helm in front. Oh, and it would not work. Helm able to turn to the outside again. Got it back. Quincy hurried a shot. Cut off there. And Rag to the outside. And Schwartz connects back on. This is Tarasenko bringing it back in. Chopped off a stick. He got there. And a shot was blocked off. Quincy got in the way of that. Touched along by Tatar. And he's got Zetterberg moving back up. If they hurry, they might have four. But right now it's three against three. Shoved over to Helm. And a save made by Allen. And play is stopped. Well, while all that action was down in front of Jake Allen, watch Alex Petrangelo. He's going to lose a skate blade. And once he realizes this, he's got to make his way to the bench. And it becomes a five on four for the Red Wings. And the referee does a nice job there helping out Petrangelo. Pushes him over to the boards and then the Blues are able to get a play around to the ice. Don't worry, the Red Wings bench was letting the players on the ice know it was a man advantage. They go at full strength action here in the last minute, 53. Ron Wall fed it on. Cole with a shot, went off a skate wide and hopped off the back of the cage. Just getting up from that play, Abdelkader. Meanwhile, this is flown on back, and Erickson will settle it down away from Berglund to Cronwall. Erickson to Cronwall again, lays it ahead for Zetterberg. Denied, though, by Oshi, who steps back. Walks one that's clubbed down by Cronwall and is able, while falling, to play to Zetterberg and a penalty coming up. Zetterberg fed one across off pole, doubles back. Zetterberg tries to play, but then it is Oshi and a penalty is coming up. That's going to be on Patrick Berglund. Second penalty of the game in the offensive zone for Berglund, and he's furious. He's incensed about it. Well, they upended Nicholas Cronwall. There's the stick between the legs. Cronwall goes down, tries to drop the evidence, and a late, late, late power play coming for the Red Wings. One twenty-one to go on the trip. Oh, what an opportunity for the number one ranked power play in the entire National Hockey League. They've been shut down pretty well today by that man, Ken Hitchcock and his group. Problem with Allen's mask, apparently. That will be Burt Godin's job. You see him there. You see Petrangelo back. Either got to put on another pair of skates or had one of his new blades put into the left skate that had the uh, blade problem. I remember St. Louis used their timeout earlier in the game. So you never know about some of these stoppages or not. You see Ken and Jeremy and Mike and Liam were talking about Ken Hitchcock and Jeremy was using the term diabolical. I don't know about diabolical, but he's a master motivator and he's an innovator. He's a shrewd guy. Barring further penalties and barring a Red Wing goal, this penalty will carry into overtime. Zetterberg. Off the draw with Backus, but it's along now for Barrett Jackman, and Jackman cleared it back down, and so the Red Wings will have to regroup. 110 left in regulation. Cronwall connects with Zetterberg. Has Nyquist and Abdelkader out there, as well as Tatar walked on by Cronwall. Tatar, oh, and a glove save made by Allen. Game saver. Turnover just inside the blue line. Cronwall walks in. Quick release by Thomas Tatar and Jake Allen with a great glove save. And his body language has been exceptional for Jake Allen. You can see he's not phased by any of this. Calm, cool, and collected. The maturity you've seen this player go through over the last couple of years. Fantastic growth. Cleared back around and out by Petrangelo. There's that same set face-off play we showed. Back in the first period, little seal by Jackman, little interference. One face-off, Petrangelo sends it down. Zetterberg glides ahead with 40 left in regulation. Checked off there. It's led on back and it's kept by Abdelkader, but then he's pawed off by Jokinen. The pass off Jokinen skate, but it's walked on by Nyquist. Moving toward the net, Abdelkader cannot reach. Petrangelo comes up with it. To tire the challenge on him as he flings it back down. It's stopped by Howard. A minute left on the power play, but only 18 seconds left before a horn. Cronwall gave it on to Nyquist. Trying to work his way along, gains the zone. Flipped it off the stick of Tatar, recovers. Chopped it on, but it's Steen with it. 
And Steen cleared one all the way back down. Two seconds and one, and the power play will continue in OT. A goalie's game. 47 shots have been let go, 24 by the Blues, and both teams have scored once. And so, as we have since 1983, a five minute sudden death overtime period about to begin. 15th, 2 2 in overtime. Pavel Datsuk. Was there enough time? The officials convene. Did it go in off Elliott? It did. And the Red Wings took the game in overtime. Datsuk not available today for the third straight time. So it's a four against three power play, still sitting as Berglund, and we are underway in OT. Bomeister sent it back in deep. Jidlitsky brings it on. Out there with Zetterberg and Cronwall and Abdelkader. It's Cronwall's puck to play. Drifts. Got it across for a shot. Scramble! Scramble! Well, the setup by the Red Wings, they get into their diamond formation. Marek Jedlitsky with the shot, saved by Allen, and then Justin Applicator actually breaks his stick. Gets chopped down right there by Alex Petrangelo, but he has enough to put it in to the back of the net. But the penalty by Patrick Berglund at the end of regulation. Made this a four on three in overtime, and you see the stick snap right in half. And Advocator wins it on the power play in overtime. David Back has challenged the officials on that. They said, no, it stands. The final score in the game on Advocator's goal, the Red Wings two, the St. Louis Blues one. Thanks for watching the NHL on NBC. Tune in to NBCSN tonight as two of the NHL's best face off. It's the Ducks and the Rangers. That's tonight at 7 Eastern. Coming up next, final round coverage of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. A long time ago, it was Alex Steen on the power play. Early in the third, Eric Cole in overtime, just an applicator. Freddie Olchek, Pierre McGuire, Mike Emmerich saying, Good afternoon from Detroit.